The commercial real estate industry is grappling with work from home challenges, higher interest rates, and the consumer slowdown. All were hot topics at the Commercial Observer Spring Financing CRE Forum today. Our very own Diane King Hall was there. Diane, sounds like an awful lot to talk about. Indeed. Not a lot they want to talk about. I Not know. In a favorable environment. Right. How do you solve a problem like the woes of the commercial real estate industry, the real estate industry in general? But again, this session focusing on commercial real estate, uh, difficulties stemming going all the way back to the pandemic, now to a difficult interest rate climate. We talked to Kathy Cunningham, who took us through a bird's eye view of the challenges the industry is facing and what's ahead. It's Kathy Cunningham. Let's take a listen. I think the last year has been a very volatile year. We've seen a lot of capital sources retrench. So we've seen the banks retrench. Uh, we've seen the CMBS, commercial mortgage backed secur securities market, really not be as efficient as it normally is. Um, the CLO market, collateralized loan obligation, also not efficient. So what it's done is really whistled down the available financing pool to a very select group of lenders. Now the flip side to that is that these lenders now really have, they can cherry pick the best deals for them. So competition is very scarce, which which also works for them. So there's opportunity in the in the clouds. If it's, yeah. So how would you characterize the deal landscape now? It really is asset type specific, I would say. I think multifamily industrial, which were really the most coveted asset classes during COVID, continue to be the asset classes that investors are flocking to. Uh, on the other side of that, office, especially class B office, is the asset type that nobody really wants to finance today. So a lot of concerns about the maturing office loans that are coming, coming due soon. And so Class B, I have heard that Class B um, buildings are, are struggling more now, Class yes. B, Class C. Um, but in particular for Class B, since you see more and more companies calling people back to the office, can that help or is it still... Just the troubles are too much right now for that sector. I, I mean, I, I think it definitely can help, but I think the troubles in that sector, they're so pronounced now because of COVID. Um, what COVID did was really kind of change the, the power dynamic also, almost where the tenants are now the people with the power and they can demand what they want from a from a property. So really only the best, flashiest, greenest, um, you know, most attractive buildings are securing tenants. Um, so it's really been a flight to quality within the office that we've seen now for a few years. And this now feels almost like the boiling point for all Office where the worst, or not the worst, or the, the least attractive office buildings um, are at a point where they're although they already struggled for a few years and now they can't get financing. So it's, okay. um, it's not a good situation. Commercial real estate was deeply affected by the pandemic, as many other industries, uh, and it's it's a struggle to recover. Uh, do you see it? Has it completely changed how commercial real estate operates, or do you think there will be a move back to how it was pre-pandemic? I think it's probably a change that we're going to see last for a long time. I think what COVID did in terms of the real estate market is really give real estate a chance to breathe and really kind of f figure out, you know, everybody's portfolios, what they look like, what tenant demand looks like. And that flight to quality was really the, the theme. Uh, so when it comes to office, especially flight to quality, when it comes to the asset classes that are performing well, I think people are far more diversified post COVID in terms of not having their portfolio completely weighed toward um, office. Instead, we see a lot of office owners now pivoting away slightly from office to, to multifamily, industrial, even retail, uh, just to basically diversify their, their holdings more. So I do think that the pandemic was a fundamental change for our industry in terms of just changing the landscape and what commercial real estate looks like and is used for. And speaking of multifamily, what are you seeing with regard to plans for conversion, especially with, you know, uh, we did an interview with Bill Rudin and he talked about how in years past you saw conversions happen downtown Manhattan. Do you think more of the industry is moving or will have to move towards that? I think a lot of them certainly want to. I think if you're an owner of a office building that is not performing or is functionally obsolete, which is a phrase we hear all the time just now, um, I think that's definitely the hope that you might be able to convert that building into a multifamily building. And also it helps sh sh uh, solve the, the housing shortage in New York City. But not every building is ripe for a conversion. It really depends on the floor plates, the, the glass. It depends on so many different things, whether or not that building could be converted. So I think while a lot of owners would love to do that, it's not necessarily going to be an easy fix for, for a lot of them. Let's talk about uh, just the headwinds in general. Uh, the interest rate climate uh, has been challenging for commercial real estate. The banking sector problems yes. in that have its impact on the sector. Uh, how are 
individuals in, or not individuals, institutions in the real estate, in commercial real estate, uh, preparing for and the headwinds that we have currently in front of us and a little bit down the pike. Well, I think now, I think the banking crisis, what it did was really kind of wake a lot of people up because we've been in a period of volatility for about 10 months in the rising rate environment. But I think a lot of people were kind of kicking the can down the road when it came to refinances and what their own portfolio would look like in terms of maturing loans. I think now that's being dealt with more forthrightly because there's no choice. I do think there's going to be pain over the next year or two as, first of all, the, the distress is currently in the market plays out. Uh, and also, you know, I think there's going to be volatility in the system. Even after rates stabilize, there's going to be a lot of volatility in commercial real estate. It's going to take the banks a longer time to come back and actively lend again. So I think until we have a functioning market on the banking side and less volatility, it's going to be a very tough market for, for a lot of the owners of commercial real estate. So indeed, certainly some challenges within the commercial real estate sector, Dave. And one of the common themes that we heard throughout our interviews with Bill Rudin, uh, the CEO of Rudin Management, and Rob Verone, Laura Rappaport, other experts in the industry, was that the need for conversion. You have a housing crisis in the U.S., so there could be a way where the problems in the commercial real estate sector could be a solution in another capacity. But you really need uh, public sector support for that, like tax credits Etc. Yeah, because the values are dramatically different in terms right. of office versus multifamily. Far right. more valuable for office. Plus, there's the issue of plumbing, which is massive, mm -hmm. the types of we windows they that. use, the walls that are load bearing. It is, people think it's simple. It it's is a not. massive challenge. We need some tech, tax abatements to help with that. No doubt. Diane, thanks. Great All stuff. All right, you got it.